who else hates a new YouTube design? Well, I'm back, and I'm here to review Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. Now, of course, you can't talk about this movie without talking about what you thought of the other films in the series, which I have to do. Now, actually, I actually watched the first three in reverse order. I started with three, worked my way down to one. So I'm going to review them in reverse order. Third one, I've gone on record to say I hate it, and I I don't I don't know why people like it. It's one of those movies I hate that other people like. But, uh... I just, I couldn't say that, it was just so boring, and it's just, it's a shame because J.J. Abrams, he's made Star Trek and Super 8, which are two really perfect movies, and it's just, I wish, if it weren't for this, he'd have a perfect track record. So I really, really wanted to like this movie, but I just, I couldn't say it. Second movie, I thought, uh, it was the most over-dramatic movie I've ever seen, like, every other scene was in slow motion, and it was just way too, like... It was pretty farcical, but it's uh, some entertainment factor. Is you can it's kind of, like Alien Resurrection, you can enjoy it because of how bad it is. First one, I actually really liked, and I thought it was really cool and clever and original, and had some great scenes like the vault scene, especially. It was really amazing, really intense. I was on the edge of my seat the whole time, and uh, so. The main problem I have with Mission Impossible, Mission Impossible series is that compared to the action movies I was raised on, like movies like Star Wars, like, or like these grand like space battles, or the Michael Bay movies, which pretty much speak for themselves, Michael Bay is pretty much like his own genre now. It's like compared to that, the Mission Impossible movies are pretty uneventful. Like I was, I was expecting like huge spectacular action scenes. I didn't get that. It was really, it felt very toned down and very, like, very tame compared to the action movies I know and love and I, what I was expecting out of Mission Impossible. So, don't like the series as a whole, but I was still nonetheless excited to see Ghost Protocol, mainly for the fact that it was Brad Bird directing. Because he has never made a bad movie. Iron Giant, everyone loved, and I, I th remember liking it. I just haven't seen it in a very long time. It definitely deserves another viewing from me. Incredibles is, of course, a perfect movie. There's no flaws with that one. Ratatouille, while it's not as good as any of the other Pixar, great Pixar movies, it's definitely not bad. And so he's never made a bad movie. He has had a good track record. And this is his first live action movie, so I was very interested to see this movie. But again, I thought it could suffer the Mission Impossible curse and not be eventful and not be, you know, a, like the great f the film I was expecting. But this movie was beyond what I was expecting. I mean, it went above and beyond. It took the best aspects of all three movies and combined them in a blender with a couple new ingredients and just hit frappe. And uh, with a t t like and. Then, after it was blended, Brad Bird added his own special mix to it, and it became Ghost Protocol. I know it's a really weird analogy, but <laughs> it was... It was everything I wanted to see out of a Mission Impossible movie, and more. It went above and beyond the criteria of the other three movies. And what I really loved about it, it felt like the first movie with, like, some of the coolness and creativity of the other two. Because, like, Mission Impossible 2 is a cool movie, but it's bad, if that makes any sense. Mission Impossible 3 had, like, two cool and good elements, which was, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman is a bad guy, and the bridge bombing sequence, which was really cool. But, uh, but it felt like the first movie. It had the intensity and the complexity of the first movie, with the fun of the sequels. And this movie is so much fun. I've never enjoyed myself in a theater that long, in uh, such a long time. It was just, I've never had more fun in a movie theater, ever. And that's saying something. But, I just, it's like it starts off with like Ethan, like, a very complicated and convoluted prison break, choreographed to Dean Martin's Ain't That a Kick in the Head. Now, in any other hands, this could have been laughable, this could have been farce, this could have been Mission Impossible 2 all over again. But the way Brad Bird directs is that he, it, it's like a really com, like really violent dance scene in a musical, 
Like, you know a lot of effort went into it, and it's just really cool and fun to watch it all unfold on screen. And that's just what you can say for all the action scenes in this movie. They're all really cool, and you just, you just want to see how it all works out. And it's so hard to believe this is his first live action movie, because like, he knows the language of like what to show and what to film, and like how the action scene should work and everything. And the ret and the acting, of course, top notch. This is probably Tom Cruise's best movie. That's right, even better than Minority Report, which and Collateral, which are two of my, uh, which are, in my opinion are Tom Cruise's best movies. Is definitely better than Mission Impossible One, but uh, like it's just like Mission Impossible movies. There's like a formula. There's like they have to have one like break-in, intense break-in sequence that mimics the vault in the first movie, and they have to have one big grand action sequence. Like the first movie had the vault, and the first and had the bullet train sequence. The second movie had the dive into the biosite building and the car chase at the end, bike chase, whatever, what have you. And the third movie had the sliding down the building and the bombing of the bridge. This movie has deviates from that formula a lot. It has like ten grand action sequences, which are amazing, and there's like two break in sequences, which both work amazing. And they're mo way more intense than the vault scene. In that sense, I think cause that's one of the most intense scenes I've ever seen in a movie. I was so on the edge of my seat during that scene, and I was even more on the edge of my seat during this movie. It's just, it felt like the Mission Impossible movie I wanted to see. It was big, and it was grand, and it was a huge spectacle. Even helped by the fact that half the movie was filmed in IMAX. And, so like, I, I didn't say this about The Dark Knight or Transformers 2, or any other movie filmed in IMAX, but this movie, was filmed in, the scenes that are filmed in IMAX just enhance the movie, make it even more grander, especially during the now famous scene where Ethan climbs up the tallest building in the world with nothing but these ciggy gloves. And I was, and the whole audience was on the edge of their seat and that scene. We were all gasping and we were like, ah! Like, no! Like when he slips and we were all, uh, everyone was sweating. I could feel sweat in the theater. And, but the IMAX scene is an enhanced movie. And if you're going to see this scene in IMAX and see it quick because you've got three days till 10, 10 knocks it out of there. But, uh, and, oh yeah, the other scene that really works great in IMAX is the final showdown in a parking garage, which I don't want to spoil for you, but it is a showstopper. In fact, the whole movie is a showstopper. It is, like, I've never been more excited or intense on the edge of my seat than ever. I, I was clapping when the movie was over. That's how excited, that's how great and exciting this movie was. It, it was a full five all the way. This is... One of the best movies of the year. One of the, it's a perfect action movie, and it's probably one of the best action movies I've seen in a long, long time. I dare go far and say it's better than the Transformers movie, or Transformers One, or even better than Transformers Three. And that is saying something, man, because I love the Transformers movies so much. And I got text message. And I gotta wrap this up pretty quick. So, because someone's coming to get me and we're gonna go shopping. And, uh, but you gotta see Mission Impossible 4. I almost said 3. I keep forgetting that. But, it is one of the greatest action movies, and it's definitely now one of my all time, new all time favorite movies. Friends 2 to 7 is out.